And so today's topic is about stopping internal conflict. I think it's a very, very, very good um, topic because most of us have choices in our life that are good. Aren't they? They're good. We should have, uh, we're not should, we are allowed to have as much money as we want. We can have a great relationship. We can travel the world. We can start a new career. We, we can write books. We can, you know, have a great family. We, we, you know, this, does everybody agree? There's nothing wrong with any of that. Like that's a, that's a thing you can have. You can start a charity. You can, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. But there's a part of us that that stops us having it, and and it's like we we got this internal civil war going on, uh, where where there's parts of us that are like right, let's go, let's go and create this new thing, and then other parts uh, that don't. So there's three things uh, for us to do. Is number one is is peace, love, leadership. Well, those are the three things: peace, love, and leadership. The first thing is peace, to really allow yourself to, to arrive at a place of peace that there is nothing better than the now. Uh, love, to, to, to love what it is you want to see created and love it into existence. And, and, and three, leadership, to actually lead your ship, to, to lead yourself to where it is you want to go, peace, love, and leadership. And so, so as we're getting ourselves into the magnetic mind, uh, the first thing is to understand we can have it all right now. We can get, we can arrive at peace. And anytime we think that we can't have it right now, we're actually giving the power away to whatever it is that we think we need in order to feel the way we want to feel. And, and so the, the very first uh, step is to arrive and go, you know what? Now is the, the most abundant thing. This this moment, this experience now is, is the most loving I can have, the most health I have. I can experience it all now. And to arrive at that place of, of peace, the, the, the second is love, right? What is it that I would love to see exist? Would I love to see, uh, would I love to see exist or love to experience a, a holiday, a new car, a, you know, a, a new charity to start an education, to write a book, to get a new home, to, uh, you know, uh, you know, have an organic farm, whatever it is, right? What, what is it that I would love? So once you, you arrive at peace, loving those into existence doesn't change that you, you know, doesn't mean that you can't be at peace. See, when you really understand the creative technologies that I'm teaching, you will understand that a, a creator isn't stressed, isn't anxious, they're completely in peace in the moment, and, and they're choosing what they want to see uh, exist and what they want to experience, and they're just simply going for it. Does that make sense? They're just simply going for it, too, but it, there's no stress involved in it. It's a, it's a very much... I'll have that and I'm going to experience that and I'm going to go for that. And, and then, and then you, you go for it. The last is leadership. The last is leadership. And, and you break that word down. You lead your ship. You lead your vehicle. You're the one and you're the one that's the predominant creative force. You are the leader. You go for it. And, and so you do. You say, well, okay, so I'm completely at peace. This is what I'd love to experience, what I'd love to see exist. This is it. And I'm going to lead myself there. And, and it's, you know, literally, as you lead yourself there, you take actions and you're at peace and you take actions and then, then it's manifest. And, and that's what we must understand is that uh, it, it's very easy for us to explain the creative process, isn't it? It's very easy to explain that. Where it's not easy, so it's, it's very easy. If you and I wanted to go create a, uh, a nice uh, dinner today, right? We say, hey, we're going to go out for dinner tonight. Uh, we would be able to be in peace and love and lead ourselves there. Is it, is it true? Right? We go, hey, look, we, you know, I don't really mind where we go. All good. We'll go somewhere. Um, what would we love? Well, you know, hey, what would you love to eat? We say, oh, I'd really love, uh, you know, I'd really love to go out for, for uh, Italian. All right, great. So, so that's what we would love. Right. So there's a whole heap of options. How would we love it? Do we want to cook at home? Do we want to go out? How, how would we love it? And then we'd simply take the actions to see it manifest, wouldn't we? We would, we would simply go, we would, you know, maybe go online and make a booking or we would, you know, go to go and get a recipe and go get the ingredients and, and we would we would go and we'd take the action and we would have it, right? We would create that, right? Pretty, pretty much, um, you know, pretty simple. So, so the creative process isn't difficult for us to understand and it's not something that we don't do. And, and you'd say, well, then, therefore, we had a magnetic mind to manifest and create that beautiful dinner together. Does that make sense, everyone? Like, like that's a creative process. And so that's not difficult to understand. And it's not difficult for us to follow. And 
And we did attract that into our life. And we did start off in the invisible and make it up and take the action and see it there. And so, so that's, that's great. No problems. And so we understand the creative process uh, in that little example. However, when it comes to creating things in our, however, when that is easy because there's nothing at stake. We might be having steak, <laughs> but there's nothing that we're risking, right? We're just going to go have, we're going to go have dinner together. Or we're going to go hang out. It's no problems. But when we're creating something where there is something at stake, that's where we have all this other resistance come up. Does that make sense? And we must say, well, what's at stake? And, and what's at stake is the, uh, the unconscious believing that it doesn't know if it can survive that new environment. When, when we have a desire to create something that is in opposition to, to what we ha have decided or assumed is safe, that is when all this other stuff turns up. See, I want you to really get this. Creating a million dollars or a hundred million dollars or an amazing company with a great relationship is, is no different than creating that dinner together. It's no, it, it's no different. It, it's, it's, a, it's a complex thing that involves decisions and actions and being a, the only difference between that and creating a new body or creating a new relationship is that there is beliefs, feelings, thoughts, and parts of your consciousness that are unsure that it's survivable to be like that. And this is, this is really what we deal with. Everything in your current reality is a direct reflection of what your unconscious knows it can survive. And that is the magnetic mind that we're sitting in. And so we've got this magnetic mind just doing a great job, right? You are alive, you are here. And it keeps on pulling things into your experience that it knows it can survive for certain. It, it will outsource, um, you know, to get certain people to be in your environment, in certain conditions, um, structures. It will focus in a certain way to, to basically feel the way it's always felt. To basically feel the way it's always felt. And it's actually marvelous. If you just take a moment and think how remarkable it is that your consciousness can keep finding the same experience again and again and again and again out of all the possible experiences, it's uh, it's quite remarkable, actually. You know, it's quite like, wow, that's really cool wow that is awesome you know it keeps on it keeps on finding so so what what it is we need to do is we need to understand that there's a reason why the magnetic mind that we currently have keeps creating the same uh reality so that we can we can leave that way of being behind and start a new reality right get into a new structure and tune into a different magnetic mind. So I want to introduce maybe for some of you that, that you have many parts to your personality. You don't just have one part of your personality. And a part is a metaphor of your personality or of your consciousness. It's a metaphor. We can't, we can't hold it. We cannot put it in a wheelbarrow. Uh, it's not it's not something we 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 can't have it. So it's a I'm use it as a metaphor that there's many parts to your personality, many parts to your consciousness. Now, even though you have a main consciousness that has a main theme, and then many other part or sub personalities or sub parts or sub aspects, even though they are actually could be conflicting. They, they still contribute to the overall well-being of, of you. So what are some part-time personalities you might have? I've got a little bit of a, a list for you. And a lot of times these part personalities, they, they can work in, in harmony, but, but sometimes they don't, okay? Sometimes they don't. 
So let's get in, let's write some out. Here's, here's some that we know. Uh, there's the protector part, protector controller, the part of you that just wants to keep everything the same, right? There's a protector controller. There's a pleaser, a people pleaser. There's a perfectionist, wants to be perfect, never fail, right? The pleaser wants to make sure everyone's looked after. Inside of all of us, we have a responsible parent or a responsible one. We have an achiever. We have a warrior, a romantic, a spiritual seeker, a procrastinator, maybe a joker, an adventurer, a prince or a princess, the, the creative part of us, the playful child, the vulnerable child, the rebel, the victim, the wise self. Look, we could go on and on and we could use different archetypes, but, but let's get in the chat box and, and share some. What are some, um, what are some different selves or some different... Uh, you know, some, some different sub-personalities that you have. Do we have some more? We have lots of them, right? We have the teenage rebel, um, or, or maybe we have the, the, good, the good boy or the good girl, right? We have the confident one. We have the shy one, right? Yeah. Caretaker, saint, sinner, awesome, the warrior, wild, so many. Resistor. Awesome, goddess, black sheep, lover, yes, the needed one, wizard, I like it, idealist, pretender, needy, the shy one, good child, pain in the ass, thanks Tina, rescue, fearful, all right, so lots, the helper, fun, lots of good stuff there, now, uh, we all know that we're a, we're a different person when we're you know when we're around our parents versus around our high school buddies versus our work colleagues or when we're in magnetic mind even we're we're different when we're just alone with our husband or wife or spouse or or when we're with that with our family or maybe our children true we're, we're different we're different us we we have different beliefs different worldview we may use different language uh, I mean, when I'm a teacher here with you, very different than when uh, I'm playing sport or if I'm having a, a drink with one of my buddies. I'm, I'm different, right? And and that's okay. We, we, we're allowed and we have lots of different versions of us that we connect into. What I want to talk about today is what happens when one or two of those uh, part-time personalities are in conflict with each other. So, for example, for the for the longest time, uh, I had a, a conflict between the part of me that wanted to to go out and make lots of money, and then the part of me that saw the world in pain and wanted to give all the money away. Uh, part of me had a big big challenge between wanting to go and just make the money versus just do it all for free. The part of me that wants to be healthy versus the part of me that just can't be effed. The part of me that actually wants to be healed and then the part of me that's just happy um, having a, a sickness and the, the state and the, and the world and family just looking after me, not having to do anything. And, and so, so we, we know that in, in some instances, and for a lot of us, we actually have an internal civil war going on by different parts of us. I mean, maybe the part of us that wants to be completely free um, versus somebody who wants to be in a relationship, right? Many times somebody starts a business because uh, they hate their job and then they realize that the business is just a more stressful job. So who feels that this is something for us to investigate and that for many people there is a part of them that is actually quite happy to just keep on mucking around uh, creating the same consciousness, creating the same reality. And even though we have this main personality that wants to go on this adventure and create this new reality and go for it, there is simply just a part of us that's that just goes, why bother? What's the point? I'm happy here. Um, you know, I'll just stay like that. Do you see that? Like the, 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 the motivated one versus the lazy one. So it's a very interesting thing. Most of the reason why we have a magnetic mind for the current reality is that for some aspect of your consciousness, 
the current reality is actually what it wants. That's what that's, it's just it just wants that. It learned when it was two years old that to uh you you know that it was safe to to work hard and to you know feel that you weren't smart enough. And and as much as we don't want to admit that no part of me wants this reality, it, well, it doesn't make sense. If you are, if you actually are a powerful creator, which you are, there is some part of you that is quite happy having the current reality. It's quite happy being unhappy. And remember the the superconscious doesn't mind. The superconscious is having a human experience. It's just happy to feel something and to have an experience and it knows that um, that we're all sourced anyway and and that it's all good. Does that make sense to everyone? The, the super, your, your super conscious doesn't care whether you experience joy or um, heartache. It just, it just is there to experience. And so what we must do is we must step into uh, a part of us that is truly powerful and use all aspects of our consciousness together. And here's how you must use them. Here's how you must use them. Is your self-conscious chooses what you would love to create. Your superconscious leads you on how to get there. And your unconscious must feel peace in receiving it. And, and that's when you have all aspects of you in, in alignment. And that's what we're, we're aiming for. That's what we're aiming for. And when you, when you arrive at that place, you simply say, this is how I want it to be. And you, you move towards it. And, and so I was sharing this and teaching this one time. And I was talking about peace and how you can have it all now. And this person says, Chris, I can't have what I want. And I said, oh, why, why not? And uh, he said to me, he said, well, I want to win a gold medal at the, um, at the Olympics, and I'm 65. And I said, oh, wow, well, that's a, you know, that's a real doozy of an objection. And I said, well, if you won the, the gold medal, you know, at the Olympics, like, what would, what would that do for you? And he said, oh, well, I would feel that I accomplished something. I would feel, and I said, oh, well, that's true. He said, I would feel that I pushed myself to the limit. And I said, great. What you really want is to feel that you pushed you to your limit. It doesn't really matter whether or not the whole world claps you in that moment, does it? He said, no, my ego actually just wants the world to clap me. I said, because honestly, they'll all clap you. And the next day, they've forgotten about you. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't remember who won the gold medals after a week. And, and he said, you're right, actually. And so he went on at 65 uh, to start sprint training and then competed in uh, Masters um, Athletics and Masters Games. And it was, it was all he wanted. And it was brilliant. And that's actually what he wanted. And, and, he, and, he just, and he just competed for himself and he did it for him. And it was amazing. I had another lady say, but Chris, you know, I never, I, I always, I just want to have a child, but I can't have a child. I said, what do you really want? I want to love and care for something. And I want it to be my own. And I want this. And then I was like, yeah, well, look, there, there's ways you can care and love for, there's many children out there that need caring and loving. Look, you, we've got to get into reality. And, and and we can have it, and we can be there, and we can do it, and we can we can have this all now. And and uh, and I started just showing people consistently that what they're doing is they're already trying to convince themselves that they can't have it. Does that make sense? They're trying to convince themselves that they can't have it. And and that's so crucial to realize that you get to be in peace in the moment, and your unconscious needs to stop. Uh, can start realizing that you can have it right now. There is a way to have it. There is, except we keep on telling ourselves we can't have it. I want to be in the Olympics. I want to be in the Olympics. What you actually want is to push yourself and accomplish and compete, right? But I want to, 
It's like, it's, it's actually so then what is it you'd love to see? Well, I'd love this. And then to have your super conscious lead, lead you there. Oh, <laughs>